Hello and welcome to my Throne of Thunder raid guide. My name is Aliena and in this video I'll show you all you have to know about Heroic Council of Elders. I'll assume you know how to kill the normal version of this fight and we'll only go over what changes for the Heroic mode. We completed this fight with 2 tanks, 3 healers and 5 DPS, but similar raid configurations may work just as well. While there isn't any glaring difference between Normal and Heroic Council, every council member has had one of their abilities altered that increases the overall difficulty. Due to the nature of the Empower mechanic, Council of Elders is a fairly harsh DPS check, and your rate must be able to burn down an empowered council member while simultaneously killing Sul before his first Empower, and of course Marley's adds. The Empower order is the same as on Normal. First you have Malak, then either Marley or Kasrigin, and lastly Sul. Since the most common strategy for this boss hinges on assuming that Sul will never ever get Empowered, you absolutely must burn him down in time. To do this, we use Bloodlust as soon as we engage the fight. We also have our melee almost full time on Sul, while our ranged DPS are assigned to the Empower target. If it looks like the Empower target was falling behind, our melee help out a little. However, to give you the most possible time to burn down Sul, you cannot break them out of their Empower early. Aim to break them out at about 95 Dark Power. Malek's difficulty, and to be honest probably the most challenging part of this encounter, is finding a good way to deal with Frostbite. In the heroic version, a 5 stack Frostbite deals 300k damage every second. Furthermore, raid members in the vicinity of a Frostbite get a debuff called Body Heat. Body Heat itself does nothing, but after 8 seconds that debuff turns into Chill to the Bone, at which point they are unable to soak Frostbite for another 8 seconds. So essentially, you can either set up groups to help soak the frostbite, or you can heal through it with the help of a cooldown chain, or you can do a mix. Since we didn't have enough cooldowns to just heal through it, nor did we want to go through the organizational headache that is assigning multiple groups, we decided to go with a mix. As soon as the first frostbite went out, we had two of our ranged DPS stack with the frostbite target until they got chilled to the bone. We then heal through it for another 8 seconds, typically assisted by some sort of personal cooldown. When chill to the bone falls off, our ranged DPS stack back up until they once again get the debuff. The last few seconds are once again healed through. During this, our frostbite target keeps moving to an absolute minimum, so our mistweaver can continuously spam heal spheres on them. This is typically a big hit to mana, but if you have a Mistweaver in your raid team, you might want to try it out. It's also worth noting that our way of dealing with Frostbite requires almost all three healers' undivided attention while it's active. You can expect two Frostbites per Malak and Power. Keep in mind that only ranged DPS and healers will be Frostbite targets, and that Paladins and Mages can bubble it off as long as they do it when the blue arrow first shows up, before it actually starts ticking. We typically get either two or three Frostbites total during the entire fight. Once Malak is broken out of his Empower, the next target will either be Marley or Kasrigin. This is completely random. Kasrigin doesn't do anything particularly different from normal, however, instead of reflecting 40% of damage back at the attacker when he's stunned after Reckless Charge, he now reflects 10% of all damage taken to all players. This is very heavy AoE damage and you need to set up rate white cooldown rotations for every stun. If Cass is getting empowered right after Malak, you'll likely still have an active Frostbite. It's especially important to employ hybrid cooldowns if that happens. Marley has a new trick up her sleeve as well. Instead of spawning ads that fixate on random rate members and aim to kill them during the empower, she now uses an ability called Twisted Fate. This pops copies of two random rate members that slowly walk towards each other. They inflict rate wide damage that hurts more the closer they are to each other. To deal with this, your rate must split up into two groups as soon as Marley gets empowered. We have a ranged pile and a melee pile. These groups must be as far apart from each other as possible while still remaining in a healing range. Once Twisted Fate happens, each group will get an add. It'll always be on one person at range and one person close by and does not take into account spec or claps, so it doesn't matter who is in which group. These have DPS priority and need to be burned down as soon as possible. Ideally, they should die together, though you can't afford to have them die a few seconds apart. Just to fade adds, much like Marley's normal adds, can be slow, truded, and stunned. If you have a priest with void tendrils in your raid, it's a guaranteed 20 second snare. Sold's quicksands will combine into bigger puddles if they overlap. This is something to be aware of as you can end up with a large mega puddle even if you kill Sul before his empower. Obviously these cannot be stood in and will remain for the rest of the encounter. If Sul were to ever get empowered, the living sands that spawn from combined pools will be incredibly powerful and can one shot a tank. But again, the goal is not to have to deal with this mechanic at all. The last new mechanic you have to know about is Soul Fragment. Every second empowerment that you break will put a debuff called Soul Fragment on a random rate member. This inflicts 55k damage every 5 seconds, but every time it ticks it also increases the damage done by it by 3%. 
You get a fancy special action button if Soul Fragment is on you that allows you to pass it to a different raid member. You want to stack Soul Fragment to about 15, then pass it. We had our melee stack it up first, then our ranged DPS, then our healers. If necessary, your tanks can stack it up last. You can likely heal through up to 30 stacks of Soul Fragment, but since you'll have multiple debuffs running at the end of the encounter, it'll add a lot of damage and stress for your healers, so passing it off at a reasonable stack is recommended. The most challenging part of this encounter is clearly finding a way to deal with the Frostbite. Once you've figured that out, and you've gotten a little practice with the Twisted Fade Ads, Heroic Council should go down fairly quickly. I'm putting a link to the whole encounter into the video info in case you want to see how we dealt with the various mechanics in detail. Good luck and have fun!